SteamOS on Windows gaming handhelds. That's the dream for a lot of players, given how difficult it can be to use Windows 11 on devices like the ROG Ally. Windows just isn't designed with controllers in mind, requiring a variety of hacky solutions, like tapping tiny touch targets on a small touchscreen or emulating a cursor with the thumbsticks to function at all. Plus, you lose much of the convenient gaming functionality that the Steam Deck offers, like the ability to suspend games and the quick menu with a variety of features. But there is a solution to this problem. Bazite offers Linux builds similar to SteamOS for users of popular Windows gaming handhelds, providing the pick up and play ease of the Steam Deck with the power of AMD's fastest mobile chips. So is the solution as seamless as it seems? What's the install process like, and can it match Windows performance? My overall impressions of Bazite are very positive. This is more or less exactly what you'd expect out of a ROG ally running SteamOS natively. The interface is almost identical to SteamOS and operates with a similar level of responsiveness and general polish. You get the same extremely console-centric interface, with incredibly smooth controller navigation, suspend and resume functionality, and easily tweakable system options. It's also remarkably stable, about as stable as SteamOS on my DAX. For those who don't have experience with SteamOS, imagine an operating system with the Steam Big Picture mode front and center, and you'll have a decent impression of how it functions. Technically, Bazite is based on a different version of Linux, Fedora and not Arch Linux, but you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference in typical use. Bazite's interface is so similar to SteamOS, in fact, that it's a lot easier to outline the ways in which they differ than the ways in which they're the same. One difference is that there's a new menu to control certain ROG Ally specific features, like the various TDP modes and lighting options, which are accessible by pressing the right back button. I'd say it's superior to ASUS's own options here, as configuring the lighting requires entering the actual Armory Crate app on Windows. I could go through specific areas where I've encountered the occasional bit of bugginess, but the Universal Blue team, the makers of Bazite, have addressed a lot of them since I first started work on this video back in August. There are some remaining quirks, like how the menus can be slightly slower to respond on Bazite, and some shared issues between Bazite and SteamOS, like how the audio slider misbehaves here. In general, expecting the operating system to be about as fast and about as convenient as SteamOS would be on a Steam Deck is a reasonable assumption. Speaking of updates, variable refresh rate has been a point of some concern since I began work on this video back in August. In the initial Bazlet build I tested, VRR didn't work at all, but a subsequent build in September enabled VRR. Unfortunately though, this came without low frame rate compensation support, which meant that it only operated above 48 FPS, even though the ROG Ally has a 120 Hz screen. As of the latest Bazite build though, this issue has been resolved and the Ally can do low frame rate compensation with VRR on its internal display, which is best experienced with the display at 120Hz. In control here, we're in the 30s in this scene, but LFC is kicking in and we are getting a much smoother presentation of frames compared to when VRR is turned off. Bazite has a very similar unified frame rate slider to Steam Deck, which is something that's also been recently improved in Bazite. It's now possible to go all the way down to 10 FPS if you so choose, with the maximum refresh rate multiple set for every frame rate. There's no control for panel refresh outside of this menu, at least for internal displays. The only substantial caveat to my eyes at the moment is that the frame rate capping system doesn't work with VRR, so as soon as you enter the realm of refresh rate multiple frame rate caps, the VRR content will just run as if you had no cap imposed at the refresh rate of the display. So at 55 FPS, your game will run up to the 110 Hz maximum, blowing past that notional 55 FPS cap. Game scope, which is used for frame rate capping under SteamOS and Bazite, doesn't work properly with VRR at the moment, which is an issue that Valve needs to solve. But the Universal Blue team is planning an update that should drop in the next few days that simply lowers the refresh rate to the desired frame rate with VRR enabled, which should essentially fix this issue down to a minimum of 48 Hz. 
So Bazlight is generally an effective and surprisingly stable and feature complete operating system, at least as I have it running here on my ROG Ally. But if it carries a big performance penalty, it hardly seems worth it. So does it actually run games well? The basic answer to that question is yes. I had no particular issues running games on the ROG Ally with good frame rates, above and beyond typical issues that SteamOS might have with features like anti-cheat. Game compatibility was good, the built-in controller worked well, including Rumble, and performance was basically in line with my rough expectations. If we compare Bazite side by side with Windows, we get similar results. Here, I'm using the Turbo TDP mode on both operating systems, with matching settings. In general, games run similarly enough to the point where it's not that easy to tell the difference in seat of your pants gameplay. On some occasions, Bazite can lag significantly behind, with some more affected games like Dead Space and Sniper Elite 5. These games are all DirectX titles, so there may be some significant performance penalties associated with the DirectX translation available through Proton. We may also be losing the benefit of Steam Deck specific optimizations that may be available in SteamOS, but when playing a large majority of games on Bazite, I would expect the results to be more or less on par with Windows. And Bazite has one big performance edge over Windows. Let's load up a popular Windows game, Final Fantasy VII Remake. The opening scene mostly runs smoothly, but notice the few stutters throughout this sequence, including this massive one right as the camera pans to cloud. These are shader compilation stutters, caused when a necessary shader needs to be compiled for your GPU on the fly. Shader pre-compilation is a good solution here, but it's sometimes difficult to gather all necessary shaders. And some titles like Final Fantasy here have no pre-compilation process whatsoever. Compare this to the same game running on first boot in Bazite, where the game, though it does drop a few frames here and there, has no corresponding shader compilation issues. The key here is that under Bazite, Valve uses a program called Fossilize to capture and play back a render sequence on your machine when you first boot a game, to pre-compile the Vulkan shaders that the game will use. Critically, this doesn't require someone with your specific hardware configuration to have played the game before. It's hardware agnostic. This means no shader compilation stutter for the ally-wielding end user, as long as they go through this process. Even games infamous for shader compilation issues, like the Ghost Runner demo, are perfectly fine, despite running at awful performance levels on Windows. I did some battery life testing as well. Here the results were similar to Windows, albeit with a small Bazite edge. We're looking at a couple extra minutes in the silent TDP mode, with a more substantial 6 minute gain in the high performance turbo mode. The problem here though is that Bazite performance dramatically slowed once it hit the mid to low single digit battery percentages while Windows performance was more consistent throughout the test. Making like for like testing challenging, putting the ally to sleep and waking it seemed to solve the issue. I did a round of battery tests in September and October and encountered a similar problem on both occasions. My impression overall though is that device runtime is pretty similar between Bazite and Windows. Of course, the deck OLED offers greater battery life than the Ally, delivering over two hours of battery life here, despite massively outperforming the Ally in its silent mode. If the Steam Deck still offers better battery life then, why would you go for the Ally? Firstly, it can deliver more performance, even under Bazite. The gain can be quite large in some titles in the Ally's turbo mode, with more moderate gains elsewhere. The Ally also has a more console-centric offset controller layout that I personally find more comfortable in a lot of games, like racers and shooters. And of course, the Ally comes packed with a 120Hz screen that is capable of VRR, which helps when framerate capping falls short. That enhanced refresh rate comes in handy with game streaming in particular, which I've taken quite a liking to recently. The Moonlight streaming software can beam games to the Ally at a blistering 120 FPS with only very rare dropouts, at least in my setup. Bazite makes this combination even better as Moonlight works without some of the frame pacing annoyances I've observed under Windows. The installation process for Bazite isn't that difficult, but we'll get to that in a moment because that's not what I started with. 
A standard Bazite install requires you to partition your internal storage, and my ROG Ally's 512GB SSD didn't seem like enough space divided two ways. So I bought a 2TB M2 SSD and got my system split open. It's really not too hard, but there were a couple of complications. Removing the back screws is painless enough, but prying the device shells apart is challenging and really requires a good tool like a thick guitar pick. Removing the SSD can be done by removing a single screw, but the screw in my unit was very tight. To get enough torque, I needed to use a different Phillips 00 screwdriver with a shallower bit, which could have been pretty annoying if I didn't have one on hand. After putting in the new SSD and performing that process in reverse, there's a cloud recovery system which worked well enough and gave me a fresh install of Windows to work with. I'm not going to go over the entire Bazin install process because it's fairly lengthy. I will say that it's not much more difficult than installing Windows on the Steam Deck, if you've done that before, and take some of the same steps. I'd recommend ROG Ally users check out Retro Game Core's video outlining the process for a hands-on video guide, as well as the resources on the Bazite website. You essentially have to partition the internal drive into two partitions for Bazite in Windows, download the Bazite image for ROG Ally, flash Bazite onto a USB drive, restart the device and go into the BIOS, and from that point onwards boot into Bazite and go through the OS installation process which isn't quite self-explanatory, but isn't especially challenging. There's a lot of waiting around for sure, but I didn't encounter any problems. It is worth noting that some other users have had significant issues though, so headaches are certainly possible here. After installing, you can boot into Windows by turning the device off, turning it on again, and repeatedly pressing the volume up switch until you see a boot screen. Bazite only adds options for your ROG Ally experience. It doesn't take them away. If you do want to return to Windows, the option is there, and you can still boot into Windows by default by changing boot priority in the BIOS. I think my number one takeaway from this whole experience is that Windows on a device like the ROG Ally isn't really fit for purpose. Microsoft has abandoned the mass market Windows tablet since the days of Windows 8 in the Metro UI and trying to run Windows 11 on essentially a very small tablet with largely vestigial controllers can be an exercise in frustration. When it works, it's almost in spite of itself and relies on faintly ridiculous solutions like using thumbsticks to control the mouse cursor. The level of actual software accommodation from Microsoft is very minimal. To be fair, Asus puts up a valiant fight with their Armory Crate software package. As a unified game launcher, I don't think that the crate is successful, but at least it provides a pretty good controller-centric interface to change ally settings. The command center is decent too, providing some ability to tweak settings at a glance, though SteamOS is more capable here as well. Among Windows handheld OEMs, I think Asus has probably done the best job, but I don't think any single hardware vendor is going to solve this problem. The ally does suffer from some bugs though, like recurrent issues with waking from sleep that might lie at Asus's feet. The utility of SteamOS doesn't lie in Linux necessarily. It's more about taking the existing PC gaming paradigm and transforming it to match console expectations without giving up the flexibility that PC gamers expect. Valve has developed a fast and fluid controller interface that is remarkably polished, performant, feature-rich, and stable. There are so many important technologies behind the scenes that make SteamOS possible, like Proton, but that basic user-facing interface is key. To make Windows work for gaming handhelds, Microsoft probably needs to do something similar, to build an interface that basically works as an end-to-end -end gaming solution, without actually ever needing to dip into a desktop OS interface. They also need to smooth out driver annoyances, shader compilation problems, and other common Windows and Xbox Game Pass issues that often require frustrating troubleshooting. And if Microsoft's future console plans involve heavier Windows integration, that could prove crucial for the home console experience as well. Bazite is a great solution to that problem on the ROG Ally, albeit one that does involve jumping through a few hoops. It also involves accepting a drop in framerate numbers in some games, though shader compilation is much less of a concern, and you also have to accept that some fraction of games don't work that well outside of Windows. 
Valve itself is also preparing an official SteamOS offering for Windows handheld use, which seems quite interesting. A smoother onboarding process and backing from Valve's SteamOS group could eliminate the few remaining hangups with Bazite and prompt more players to make the jump. I'd imagine that some of the work that went into Bazite could also feed into a more fully fledged version of SteamOS for other Windows handhelds. I'd also be curious to see how Bazite fares on a full-fledged gaming PC for more living room oriented play. So a Windows gaming handheld sans Windows. It's a weird concept, but one that works surprisingly well. Bazite provides a great SteamOS-like experience for Windows handheld users. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfunder.net for exclusive and early access content and to get in touch use social media. Thanks for watching.